Question 1a, what happens to these equations when x approaches negative 2? First of all, we're going to check whether the denominator is going to be 0 or not. So how we're going to check is, just substitute x is equal to negative 2 into the denominators and check whether it's 0 or not. So at minus 2, 2 squared is 4, indeed this becomes 0. So what we're going to do is, we're going to factorize the equation first and try to simplify it. So why is it like this? We can check with my previous video if you don't understand. So we're going to make sure that the ax square, the a is a positive so that it's easier for us to factorize. So what we're going to do is, we just change the sign when we have a negative become positive, when we have a positive it become negative. So it's easier for us to factorize. Why is this happening? It's because you can think of like whatever on top and bottom times by negative 1. This is the logic behind it. Okay? So after that, we're going to simplify it. So we can just write down the limit again. The limit of x approaches negative 2. So what we're going to do is we're going to factorize. If you don't remember, I will show to you how. If you remember, you can skip this part. So what we're going to do is, what times what you get x squared? x times x. What times what you get negative at is 4 times 2. Then you cross it, you have 4x and 2x. But in the end, it must be a negative 2. So this is negative, this is negative, this is positive. So this is how we get x minus 4, x plus 2. But can you see that now we have 2 and 8. They are factors of 2. So we can take 2 out, then everybody divided by 2. So this is why we have x squared minus 4. But now we're going to simplify again, just write down the limit of x approaches negative 2 again. But can we further factorize? Yes. This is a perfect square. This is also a perfect square. So if you don't know the property, you can straight away do. If you don't know, I will show to you one more time again. So this is where we have 0x. So x times x is x squared. 2 and 2 is 4. So if you cross, in order to get 0x, 1 must be negative, 1 must be positive. positive. So this is why we have x minus 2, x plus 2. So let me write it down first. It's a x minus 2, x plus 2 after factorize. And the one on top, we just copy it back first. Then we can see that so nice that we can eventually just cut it off. Because they have the same term, which is x plus 2. So let me cut it off. So after cut off, we just need to rewrite our equation first, x minus 4 over 2x minus 2. So now we know the denominator is no longer 0. This is where we can now substitute our negative 2 into the equations. So a negative 2 minus 4 over 2, negative 2 minus 2. If we just key it into calculator, you can find the final answer. So if I do it manually, it's negative 6. 2, negative 4. So this is where we have 3 over 4. Question 1b. First of all, we're going to check whether the denominator is 0 or not. For this case, it's so obvious that the denominator becomes 0. So what we're going to do is, we're going to rationalize first these equations. So if you don't know how to do, you can check back with my video. What we're going to do is, we just times with the conjugate. So what's the conjugate for these functions? So don't forget the conjugate is if you have minus 1 become plus 1. So this is why we have 1 plus x plus x squared. And don't forget it's a plus 1. So same thing, we're going to do both numerator and denominator to be fair enough, right? Then after that, we're just going to simplify the equation first. Same thing, we still have the limit of x approaches 0. And in this kind of conjugate, when you times the conjugate, eventually you have a shortcut where you have just a square minus b square. You can check with my video if you don't understand. So this is why we have a square. We call this as a, this is b. Okay? So square of the square is just basically 1 plus x plus x square. b is 1 minus 1 square is still minus 1. Minus 1. And then over the one we're going to expand is x times this one. We have x square root of 1 plus x plus x squared. But don't forget x also times 1. 
So after that, what we have is we're going to have plus x, right? Then again, we're going to simplify again where we have the same thing where the limit of x approaches 0. So we can see that 1 minus 1, there's no more constant. We left here only x squared plus x. Meanwhile, at the bottom, it seems to be complicated to simplify. We just keep it as it is now. And we're going to see how to simplify further later on. So now we can see that everybody has x. We can, we can factorize the x out. Or we can think of everybody divided by x. So if I take the x out, we have x. And then we have x plus 1. Meanwhile, at the bottom, same thing, we can take the x out. What we might take the x out, it means that everybody divided by the x, okay? So x, what we are going to left is only square root of 1 plus x plus x squared plus 1. So now we can so nice, we can see that eventually we can simplify the x and x can cut off. So this is what we want. So now we left with x plus 1 over square root of 1 plus x plus x squared plus 1. So now we know the denominator is no longer 0. This is a time when we can substitute the 0. So we're going to substitute by 0 plus 1 over square root of 1 plus 0 plus 0 squared plus 1. So we're going to compute this one. 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 plus 0 plus 0 is 1. Square root of 1 is also 1. So this is why we have the answer as 1 over 2. They tell us that the equation will approach to add when x approaches k. So what we're going to do is, we're going to time shift the conjugate first to rationalize the equations. So how to time shift the conjugate? When we have a minus, the conjugate is going to be a plus. So just remember, we're going to do to the both sides where we have the numerator and denominators. So we're going to time shift the conjugate with a plus of square root x squared plus 7 and 4 plus square root of x squared plus 7. Then we're going to simplify a little bit of the equations. Same thing, we have limit of x approaches k. Don't worry with the at first, later we're going to settle it. So on top we have 9 minus x squared times with the 4 plus square root of x squared plus 7. Meanwhile, as the denominators we know, it's going to be a squared minus b squared because it's time, it's like when you get right, which a is here, this is b, okay? So 4 squared is 16, minus b squared is x squared plus 7. Then we're going to simplify a little bit again, where we have the limit of x approaches k. So same thing, we have 9 minus x squared on top, and 4 plus square root of x squared plus 7. If we simplify the one at the bottom, we have 16 minus 7, which is 9 minus x squared. So now, can you see that? We can just cut off these two terms. We're now only left with limit of x approaches k, 4 plus square root of x squared plus 7. And now only we take in our add, which everything here must be equivalent to add. So now we can substitute our limit. So 4 plus square root of k squared plus 7 is equivalent to 8. And I call carry forward the right hand side to do. So 8 minus 4 is 4 is equivalent to square root of k squared plus 7. If I square both sides, we have 16 is equal to k squared plus 7. Bring the 7 over. 16 minus 7 is 9 is equal to k squared. And we're going to square root both sides, we will have k is equivalent to positive or negative square root of 9. So k is positive or negative 3. Question number 2. Given that the limit of the equation when x approaches negative 1, the answer is going to be negative 3. Find the value of constant a. So first, we're going to check whether the denominator is going to be 0 or not. So how we're going to check again, just substitute our x is negative 1. So we have negative 1 plus 4, which is equivalent to 3, which is not 
equal to zero, then it's fine. If not equal to zero, we can straight away substitute in. So we can say that a minus five over negative one plus four must be equivalent to negative three. And simplify it a bit. A minus five over three is equivalent to negative three. I bring over the divided by three go over there become times three. So negative three times three is equal to a minus five. So a minus five is going to be negative nine. Negative five go over there become plus five. Negative five plus five, which is why we have a equal to negative four and we are done. Question number three, we are going to use quotient rules. If you don't know how to do, you can check with my video. We take the derivative of one is zero. The derivative of two x plus one is two. So what we're going to do is we're going to bottom up. So bottom up is going to be 2x plus 1 times 0 minus whatever they're going down. So 1 times 2. Then everybody is going to be supported by the person at the bottom, which is 2x plus 1. So give it a little bit um of power of 2. Then we are almost done. We just need to simplify it. This one becomes 0 is nothing. So minus 2 over 2x plus 1 squared and we are done for a. So we're going to do 3b now. So this one, you can see that this is the first function of 4x under function which is 2x minus 1 to the power of 5. This way, we're going to do the product rules. So what we're going to do is, we're going to differentiate 4x first. Differentiate 4x, we have 4 then times is the original one, which is 2x minus 1 to the power of 5, plus we take turns. So now 4x is going to be sitting at the side, and we get to differentiate 2x minus 1 to the power of 5. So 5 come down, and it self reduce the power by 1. But don't forget, we're going to differentiate whatever in the inner function, which is 2. So after that, we're just going to simplify for now. So that's why we have 4 2x minus 1 to the power of 5 plus 4x. 5 times 2 is 10, so it's why we have 40x. And everything is times 2x minus 1 to the power of 4. So can you see that we can simplify by factorizing? So if you factorize it, 4 and 40, we can take 4 out. 2x minus 1 to the power of 5, x, 2x minus 1 power of 4. So at least both of them have power of 4. So this is why we have take out 2x minus 1 to the power of 4. So after that, we can just make a big bracket here. Everybody divided by 4, 2x minus 1 power of 4. So this one we left it only 1 of the 2x minus 1. 40x divided by 4 is 10x. This is why we have 10x. And this one, no more. So after that, this is why we have 4 bracket 2x minus 1 to the power of 4. 2x plus 10x is 12x. So we have 12x minus 1. And we are done. For this question, we're going to use the trick that we learned last time, where we have 1 over x squared. The differentiation of this one is basically just 2 over x cubed. And don't forget, it's a negative. So same thing here. We're going to do this one. We have 6 as a constant times the outside first. Then we have negative 2 over 2 minus x to the power of 3. But don't forget to differentiate the inner functions become times negative 1. 6 times negative 2 times negative 1, we have 12 over 2 minus x to the power of 3. And we are done. If you don't know how to do, you can check with my previous video. This question also consists of two functions, where the first function is x, and the second function is going to be the square root of x plus 3. So this is why we are also going to use the product rules. When x is being differentiated, it becomes 1. Then the second function is going to be just sit there and wait for us. Meanwhile, for the second round, where x is just sitting there waiting for us, we're going to differentiate the square root of x plus 3. So how to differentiate this one is, just remember, when we have power of 1 over 2, we bring it down, 1 over 2 x plus 3. 3 become power of negative 1 half. 1 half belong at the bottom is why we have 1 over 2 square root of x plus 3. If you forget how to do, 
If you want to have a fast way, you can look at my video where we say that when we have square of x, it's just equivalent to 1 over 2 square of x. So it's much faster. So this is why we have 1 over 2 square of x plus 3. Because the inner function just differentiated by 1. This is why we have 1. Right? So nothing changes. So after that, we can just simplify it. So square of x plus 3, we're going to combine both of them. So when we have no fraction, we make it the bottom is 1. This is why we have x over 2 over square root x plus 3. So to make them the same denominators, what we're going to do is, we're going to times by 2 of square root as x plus 3, times 2 square root of x plus 3 as well. So remember, root and root become normal root, so this is why we have 2 x plus 3, and same denominators, it can be under one roof, so 2 square root of x plus 3 plus x. So now we're going to simplify it. 2x plus x is 3x plus 2 times 3 is 6 over 2 square root of x plus 3. But 3 and 6, can you see that? They are factor of 3. So we can take the 3 out, become 3x plus 2 over 2 square root of x plus 3. Hey, if you have any questions or would like to see any kind of video, do leave your comments below and let me know. If you want to support us so that we could make more video like this, the simplest way is just by sharing the video with your friends. Click the like buttons and consider subscribe to this channel. See you in the next video.